you talked about player acquisition, Brock Purdy, dumb mm-hmm. luck or mm-hmm. or just saying we did like this guy and he still happened to be there when he came around when we picked in the seventh round. I'd say a little bit of both. I, I know when the the, the quarterbacks coaches, uh, Clay Kubiak and uh, Brian Greasy, Kubiak being the assistant quarterbacks coach, Brian Greasy, the, the main quarterbacks coach, when they were tasked with the assignment of here's a list of guys who are late round or undrafted guys, who do you like? It came back. The consensus was Brock Purdy. So, you know, we, we can give the 49ers a lot of credit for selecting Brock Purdy, but also if they knew he was anywhere near this good, they wouldn't have waited until the final (laughs) pick in the draft to take him. But I think it speaks to just how sometimes you just don't know until you get the guy in the building and maybe at that position more than any other where, yeah, I, I remember talking to people that draft night, people with the 49ers and they kind of, dismissed it a little bit as uh you know he he's he's kind of like nick mullins no disrespect to nick mullins he's still a backup <laughs> in the league he's gonna be you know nick mullins has already played a long time in the nfl yes, he has. but you know no one uh no one thought that that brock purdy would be able to step in in the middle of his rookie season and then just lock down the starting job to the point where now he that position is considered you know in very good hands for the foreseeable future including this year and next year for sure playing for the minimum salary brock purdy is an mvp candidate and he's the 47th highest paid player on the 49ers 53 man <laughs> roster i mean you, you you think about that and and that's where you're like wow they really did strike gold and and you know the the thing when I look at Brock Purdy and, and, and watching Kyle Shanahan and the evolution of this offense and things like this, everyone's like, Brock Purdy is a system guy. He runs Kyle's offense the right way. And and you would know this, and this is just me observationally, but to me, he has allowed Kyle to expand his playbook in a way that we haven't seen Kyle run this offense before. Am, am I off base in watching this, or are they doing more things, not because of the chess pieces, but because they've got Brock Purdy. Kyle Shanahan has more trust in Brock Purdy for sure than any quarterback he's had with the 49ers. Just the ability, the the confidence that he feels in installing a game plan. I mean, case in point, 49ers had a Thursday night game uh, week three. So you would think that the playbook, the, uh, the game plan would be kind of a stripped down version. It was a regular game plan plus they put so much in for that Thursday night game against the giants. Why? Because Kyle Shanahan has confidence that Brock Purdy can handle it. So it's, it's all of the adjustments off of the adjustments, all the motions, all the, the shifts, all the variations of certain plays it's he puts a lot on his plate and Brock Purdy has shown that he can handle all of that. So what what Kyle Shanahan hates more than anything is to tell a quarterback during the course of the week, here's the play call. Here's the defense you're going to see. This is going to be open. And when that play comes on Sunday, if it's that play call and if it's that defense and the guy is open, and the quarterback doesn't see him or the ball's going somewhere else, Kyle Shanahan, that drives him crazy. You you would often see in Shanahan's first few years with the 49ers, and I'm sure every coordinator job he's been, you know, he he would be a horrible poker player because you can tell <laughs> what's what's going on. Right. You would see the clips on the sideline, maybe him just in the background, throwing his hands up, you know, showing some form of disgust because the quarterback did not do what he was told to do or what he was instructed to do. You haven't seen any of that with Brock Purdy. And Matt, mind you, he is coming off of significant surgery to his arm. Real quick, Matt, you know, we we know that Brock Purdy's first win came against Tom Brady. Listen to what Tom Brady had to say about Brock Purdy. You don't hear of guys like Brock Purdy until Brock Purdy's doing amazing things out on the field. So it's kind of a fun story. And, And I hope it continues for him because he seems like he's a really humble you know, young man, and and he wants to go out there and do great things. And people, the 
know, I think the more you kind of have that chip on your shoulder like he does, and there were not quite the expectations, it's nice to go out there and continue to prove people wrong. You know, it's nice to have people that can show up every day, put the team first, do what they're asked to do. And, you know, he's done a good job of that. He's really exceeding a lot of people's expectations. And that came from Brady's uh, Let's Go podcast that he does with Jim Gray and Larry Fitzgerald. But hearing that from a late round draft pick quarterback who's the greatest of all time, there is some type of synchronicity, so to speak, I guess, at least for the, the mental aspect of it that he has with Brock Purdy. Yeah, he probably sees a lot of himself in in Brock Purdy. I mean, they, you know, they're, they're different body types or different skill sets, but kind of the the same general idea applies to both. You know, the the late round draft pick who felt like uh, you know he was underestimated. In the case of Brock Purdy, he was told he was irrelevant, and you know, before he knew what that meant. You know, the whole festival uh, down in Newport Beach in, in uh, Southern California, the Mystery Relevant right. Festival. You know, that kind of early on, I think Brock wasn't too fond of hearing his name associated with Mr. Irrelevant. Um, but, you know, it's it's the, the the measurables are one thing, you know, the velocity on the football, the 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 height, the the weight, the speed, all that. But so much of playing quarterback are the things you can't see. And maybe only the things uh, the quarterback can see. I mean, I, I kind of say I feel like Brock Purdy has this rare ability, as did Tom Brady, of seeing and very few quarterbacks, by the way, had this ability to basically see a picture of the field a second and a half or two seconds before that actually occurs. I mean, you watch some of the throws that Brock Purdy makes. And when he's letting the football, you know, release, when he's throwing it, there's, you know, you, if you pause the film, nobody's open. And it's that anticipation of knowing where those windows are going to come open and, and his ability to, to deliver it accurately, precisely timing rhythm and all that, uh, that that's really the strength that Brock Purdy has. In addition to all those intangibles, he's well liked in the in yes. the locker room and, and everything else. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 